And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, guys. No, what I was saying is that the, the state was taking on water, which that's what that means, and it was. Our economy was struggling. We were at the, you know, at the peak of, the, of a pandemic. Uh, we were, you know, we had the lowest uh, vaccination rates in the country. Uh, and our schools, that were a big question mark about getting kids back in the classroom. And history has shown that my interest in schools uh, has proven to be true when we have a recovery that could take as much as two to five years to actually recover from this pandemic. So I was, I'm describing the situation which was real. Yes, the state of Rhode Island was taking on water, and if, if, if we made different decisions, it would be still taking on water. And today, we have momentum, and that's the reason I'm running for governor, to take advantage of that momentum. Who knows? All I know is that we did the job that we needed to do, and that's what the people expect. So I'm not into comparing, and uh, we'll take care of the, uh, the campaign and, and all, everything that entails in terms of comparing notes. All I can tell you is that we have put out a, a strong platform, our budgets, budgets describe priorities. The budget is a one that we can afford. It doesn't have any new taxes. The dollars that we're appropriating uh, through the, uh, the federal dollars meets the needs of the state of Rhode Island in terms of uh, investing in housing, investing in jobs, investing in our schools. Uh, and um, so that, so I, I don't compare. I just get, go out and do the work and uh, get the help of the people who are out there doing the work right every single day. I don't, I don't have to offer anything different. I offer what I do. And I just described where we are fastest growing economy in the re recovering economy in the country, highest vaccination rates, lowest hospitalization rates in terms of the COVID. Those are all results of work that we were able to do, getting, uh, working on the th most important things that are facing the people in the state of Rhode Island. So we'll let, we'll let the campaign determine where the differences are. All I can tell you is that we're going to continue doing the work to make sure that the state of Rhode Island uh, is, um, does meet its potential in a way that I believe it can, and we have the momentum to make that happen. So when I was a mayor, we put together a coalition of municipal leaders. Charlie Lombardi was there, Joe Palacina, then it came on board after, it was a little before Lisa Baldelli Hunt got into office, but we continued doing that. Joe Alman was there, uh, he's working in our office right now. Municipal leaders and leaders in the state of Rhode Island, they, they should leave that political sign at the door and they should get the work done. And that's exactly what we did as municipal leaders, exactly what I'm doing today as a governor. Again, as I said in my uh, remarks, meeting with the Senate president, meeting with the speaker weekly uh, on behalf of the people in the state of Rhode Island. The 2030 uh, is a vision for the state of Rhode Island that is being embraced by the, everyone in the people, may, many thousands of people in the state of Rhode Island, they've been including in that. The Rhode Island 2030, our budget and our proposal in terms of how we would spend the billion dollars reflects that, that vision, whether it has to do with it growing our economy, taking advantage of the um, opportunities that are in front of us on the green economy, the blue economy, life science, supporting our small businesses. I mean, we're here to, in today on a, on a mid-sized, fairly large business. As you can see, we need large businesses. We need to support them. We need to support a small business. Uh, clearly, on the, on the education piece, we're putting forward a, a, a presentation and an offering that can be game-changing for the state of Rhode Island if we invest the dollars in these local learning centers, 52 week a year, invest the dollars that we have in the budget to actually build facilities. I think we're talking in multiple communities here, including Lisa, to build community centers uh, that hit help 
jobs and education. And then the higher ed academy is also the completing process there where you're going to certificate up, um, have um, associate degrees, uh, four-year degrees. When we lift up the state of Rhode Island on education and we make education the priority in everybody's community and their families, we know it has an economic advantage over we reach Massachusetts levels in our schools is worth $2 billion of earning power for the people in the state of Rhode Island and their families. And we also know what that means uh, to the boys and girls that live in Rhode Island in terms of reaching their potential for their future. So it's a comprehensive, 2030 is a comprehensive vision that is being embraced by people around the state of Rhode Island. I would expect that that would be a brand when I'm elected for four years, that will be a brand that people in the state of Rhode Island will embrace. Yeah, so we're, we're, um, we're just starting to launch out. I mean, to have uh, support from, uh, you know, really strong and leaders in the state of Rhode Island, uh, including our lieutenant governor and our mayors, um, that's how we get things done. If we don't have that base of support locally, uh, really what we say on the state level doesn't matter. That's why I put 39 flags in our rotunda at the State House to remind people that those are the communities, the people who live in those communities sent us to the State House to do a job. So, it, so it's very important. It's very important not only for me personally to have the friendship, but also it's very important in terms of policy and improving the state of Rhode Island and taking advantage of the momentum that we have been building. Now, during a likely primary campaign, how much money do you expect to have to raise and spend? We'll raise what we need and we'll be very competitive at the ballot box. I'm sorry, I can't hear it. No, I think that we'll be able to manage it just fine. That's why we're putting a campaign team together separate from our office, and uh, they got work to do, and they're going to get it done, and I'm going to continue to govern every single day uh, in, in the office as I've had for the last um, 11 and a half months. So, no, we'll manage it. That's what we do. That's what leaders do. We know it. We understand it. This is not my first campaign. Right. Well, there's a reason I invited us to be in here today. I think it speaks for itself. Well, first of all, we're number one in vaccinations in the state, in the country. We have the lowest hospitalization rates in the country today. Um, what we went through, the entire country went through in terms of uh, spikes in the, in the Omicron. We managed it well. Uh, we had a little bit of blip there on some testing, but what did I do? I went out to Center Falls. I saw exactly what the problem was. We put Matt Pappas in charge, and then within three days, nobody's talking about testing anymore. Got a million test kits. Joe and I spent out in the cold uh, for about three hours, putting out thousands of test kits to the people in the state of Rhode Island. So, look, we're in a really good position today. And the reason we're in a good position is because we led the charge over the last 12 months. Would you have done anything differently if you had known about December and January? Well, first of all, we tested more than any state in the country. So, we, so of course, our, we identified more cases than anywhere in the country. And that's what we were supposed to do to keep people healthy in the state of Rhode Island. So we we did we we every single day we worked as hard as we could we did our very best and um and we're getting the results for it right now so i can't look back and say oh we could have done this or could have done that when we're positioned in the state of rhode island the way we are today i think we can i think the people in the state of rhode island can be very proud of the way that they responded to multiple challenges that we've had across the you know across the way so no i would say we did a very good job there's always room for improvement, but we did a very good job. I'll take a couple more. We'll take a couple more.
No, I, what we do is respond. We respond to the challenges that are in front of us. So we, d we did respond. And uh, Mark Pappas, Director Pappas, was uh, involved, engaged for the whole two years. So he was just a, con he was just a good person to put in that place to kind of shore it up and make it a whole of government operation. So we did, we did what we needed to do, and we did it well. Once we know who uh, everybody is, once we all declare, certainly that's, that's what I expect to do this summer. Uh, he's here to help out today. Leave him alone. <laughs> All right, I think I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for being here today, and, and thank you for everybody out there that's listening. We've got a good, uh, good team, and we're ready to go.